Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We started discussing about different kinds of voltammetry and their physical significances. The target of this video series is to understand where exactly we use different voltammetry. You are doing a particular experiment and which kind of characterization you should look for. In this video, we are specifically focusing on a comparative discussion between LSV which is linear sweep voltammetry and cyclic voltammetry CV. So LSV we all know in LSV what we do we give a ramp function that is the voltage is varying from a low potential to high potential in most of the cases and it could also be the opposite that is uh, starting with a high potential and moving towards a low potential. And in case of cyclic voltammetry we uh, already discussed the potential which is being applied on the working electrode is a triangular function so it starts from a very low value it reaches a, a high value so there is a positive scan and then uh, again from the peak it goes down linearly so uh, as a whole it forms a triangular wave so initially we uh, again uh, focus on cyclic voltammetry just to uh, recap i talk about the fundamentals of cyclic voltammetry quickly uh, as you can see this triangular wave is divided into two zones one is given by the sky blue color and another is uh, given by the dark color so you can see uh, in the first step which is increasing uh, we actually go from a negative potential to a positive potential that means the potential is increasing and we call this is this one as oxidative scan and the other one that is the downward portion uh, here what we do we go from a higher potential to a low potential and this at this point of time uh, we carry out reduction that is why this is called uh, cathodic or uh, reductive scan in cyclic voltammetry we basically focus on uh, the cases which are reversible in nature i'll talk about uh, three things which are reversibility irreversibility and quasi reversibility and in cyclic voltammetry we can actually characterize those reaction uh, we talked about different applications quickly i am talking uh, about them again so uh, cyclic voltammetry is used for electrochemical sensors study of battery materials battery degradation we will shortly talk about it uh, energy storage systems like uh, super capacitor and all corrosion behavior of metals and alloys studying catalytic activity uh, deposition of metal and so on so initially let us talk about how we understand from a cyclic voltammetry car whether the reaction is reversible, irreversible or quasi-reversible. In most of the cases, if the reaction is absolutely or ideally reversible, then we get a perfect oxidation and a perfect reduction peak as you can see in this uh, black line. And quasi-reversible is something where say the forward reaction is having a higher rate constant. It is uh, the forward reaction is happening with a higher rate and the backward reaction is having a lower rate so the formation of product is higher compared to product going back to the reactant so those cases are called quasi reversible reactions and in those cases two prominent peaks we do not get one peak is relatively higher than the other one it depends on which uh, which uh, which directional reaction is more prominent so in this case you can see the oxidative scan the oxidation peak is more prominent or uh, intense in nature compared to the uh, reduction peak and in irreversible uh, the reaction say uh, goes in one direction only say OX plus NE giving only RED so in those cases we only get one particular peak if it is the uh, 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 redox reaction uh, and oxidation is happening you are getting only oxidation peak you miss the reduction peak because there is no reduction is taking place so just qualitatively looking at the cyclic voltammetry curve we can talk about the nature of the system now let us talk about how we can understand degradation of a particular electrode by the help of a cyclic voltammetry curve so first of all the in a layman language if some degradation is taking place over time we'll see some changes in the cyclic voltammetry curve 
because the very reaction was happening on the electrode now if the electrode material is getting degraded then obviously the phenomenon which was happening at the interface of the electrode and electrolyte that will change and that will affect the cyclic voltammetry curve so here we have given one example where you can see uh, there are three curves given by black uh, red and the blue lines and the black one <coughs> is uh, here we have uh, noted say a fresh heat treated carbon paper before uh, cycling that means that this is the fresh one and this is after 100 cycles so fresh heat treated carbon paper after 100 cycles as a positive electrode that is the B curve the red one and the C one is the fresh heat treated carbon paper after 100 cycles as a negative electrode so the so same uh, electrode is taken as positive and negative and it is after 100 cycles it is getting degraded and you can see the curve is different here so if you look at the black line here it has a prominent oxidation reduction peak but if we look at the red one you can see the car nature of the curve has changed and again in the blue line you can see we do not get any prominent uh, peak at the bottom so all those things are happening due to the degradation of the electrode and as we go ahead with the characterization curves we do characterization for more uh, degradation phenomena we get more insight into those uh, nature I mean uh, cyclic voltammetry nature the idea is by looking at the qualitative nature of the car we can get those information and most of the cases those information are necessary like you are working with a lithium ion battery and over different cycles of charging and discharging if you do characterization you may expect a change and from those qualitative changes you can actually decipher about the degradation kinetics of that particular lithium ion electrode now we'll talk about uh, basic cyclic voltammetric nature so how exactly we qualitatively see the cyclic voltammetric curve so if some if you have something which is perfectly capacitive then the nature of cyclic voltammetric gram should be like a box which is given by this plot a in plot b you can see if certain capacitive quantity certain capacity part is attached with a in parallel if you have a resistance then uh, your uh, nature of the curve changes from uh, this rectangular shape to this kind of parallelogram kind of shape now what happens if you have a capacitor and a resistor in series in those cases you get this kind of curve and what if we have this kind of distribution that means a capacitive nature is in parallel with the resistance and the whole is again in series with a with another resistance then uh, we get this kind of nature you can see this uh, nature of this c and d is different we have a sharp kind of edge at the corner for the d1 where there are two resistances one in series and one in parallel so the ultimate idea is if we have if you are working with super capacitor so basically super capacitor should be a ideal capacitive system but in real scenario we have different resistances in series and in parallel that is why uh, we should ex we uh, expect that ideal super capacitor gives a cyclic voltagram like this but we never get because there is no ideal super capacitor so we basically get this kind of nature in super capacitor either this or this suppose uh, one experiment has been performed you can see the experiment uh, I mean in the uh, figure A the nature is something like this at the corner you can see there is an edge and the nature is uh, similar to the D plot so from uh, by looking at this particular plot we can decipher there is capacitor in series there is a resistances and in parallel also there is a resistance but in B if you look at this particular nature is very similar to the C1 so here uh, the capacitor is in series with a resistance and that is why the nature is so so the ultimate idea is uh, if we know about those things by looking at the CV qualitatively we can infer about the system and then if we analyze the CV curves quantitatively 
will understand more information about the system in this particular video i am not going into the quantitative discussion but in some other video we will talk about quantitative analysis of cyclic voltagram uh, finally in this schematic diagram uh, we would like to show you uh, what are the information you can get from particular cv curve if this is a box like this as i have already mentioned this is purely capacity or ideal capacitor the green one then if it has a resistance as it is mentioned in the plot b uh, so this is called resistive capacitor and if we have something peak like this in a super capacitor uh, cyclic voltagram then we call it pseudo capacitor so what does it mean in pseudo capacitor some faradic reaction also takes place and in most of the cases those faradic reaction is very faster we get a pseudo kind of peak in cyclic voltagrams and that is why it is called pseudo capacitance now coming to uh, linear sieve voltammetry uh, before that i would like to conclude those cv curves so we learned that from cyclic voltammetry we can understand about the system we can actually know whether it is a reversible reaction irreversible reaction and from the intensity of the peak we can know about the intensity of reversibility irreversibility and also the intensity of the faradic reaction so linear sieve voltammetry again uh, uh, we apply a linear ramp voltage and we get a current response so whether it's a linear sieve voltammetry or a cyclic voltammetry the data which we are dealing with are voltage time and current so those three information we have and we just plot uh, with respect to our need and we understand about the system so i just want to uh, recap uh, what are the applications of uh, linear sieve voltammetry first electron transfer kinetics uh, if you have this kind of system we prefer to have lsv um, characterization determination of analyte concentration in solu solution in some of the uh, sensor calibration we have given some example here electroplating electrochemical deposition is another example this example will also be uh, given in this particular video and also electrochemical reactivity studies so first of all uh, linear sieve voltammetry is preferred if a system is irreversible now why it is preferred over cyclic voltammetry if we go back and show you the curve for the <coughs> irreversible one you can see uh, only uh, on the top we get a peak and at the bottom we do not give, we do not get any specific information so basically even if we do a cyclic voltammetry the information for the backward scan i mean it is giving us not much uh, relevant information so actually we can get rid of that reductive scan we can only have this oxidative scan and that is what nothing but is linear sieve voltammetry so few examples we have jotted down here so the first one is we can linear sieve voltammetry helps us checking the electrolyte stability so uh, whether it's a super capacitor or a battery system we must use some electrolyte electrolyte could be a liquid electrolyte it could be a solid electrolyte like uh, in this uh, case the example is of a spe that is solid polymer electrolyte and in this system we would like to know what is the stability of the electrolyte which we are using that is why we give a scan uh, to to have an information about the current flow against the applied potential and if we get something like this like here you can see we can we can say at this particular potential the uh, i mean the stability of the electrolyte is breaking uh, the higher current which is shooting up from here this is an indication of breaking of the electrolyte maybe the electrolyte is undergoing oxidation and we get the information that if we have this particular system our applied voltage should not exceed this particular one so maybe we will be doing a cyclic voltammetry characterization only but before doing a cyclic voltammetry characterization we do a linear sieve voltammetry to understand the uh, stability potential and which we, uh, and we decide that in cv we would not exceed this particular potential uh, another example is given for the four five different polymers and we do a linear sieve voltammetry to understand is oxidative or 
uh, stability curve uh, this is an example uh, where oer study that is oxygen evolution reaction kinetics for uh, electrolysis say uh, here what we have shown three different catalysts have been taken for electrolysis of water heterogeneous electrolysis of water and we want to see the stability of those uh, i mean stability of the electrolyte in the presence of those catalysts so here you see the red one it is the most unstable one because at this very potential it starts degrading and quickly uh, i mean uh, this is the oer reaction and quickly current increases that means the reaction is very fast here for the other two catalysts although the initiation potential is at 1.6 uh, volt only but the current is not increasing so fast that means the oer reaction uh, kinetics for those two catalysts are little bit uh, li little bit sluggish compared to the red one so those information we can get uh, from lsv and that is why it is a useful technique now talking about oxidative stability of lithium ion battery so again this is a typical example of studying uh, electrolyte stability with the help of lsv so what exactly we are looking at so we applied a voltage say from 2.8 to 5.2 and we want to know within this window whether the electrolyte is stable or not suppose the yellow one uh, that could be used for a battery uh, electrolyte if we use that and if we try to apply a voltage of say 4.8 then there is uh, there is a chance that electrolyte is undergoing oxidation that means it is degrading uh, and that is why you cannot develop you cannot design a system which which is uh, which should have uh, more than 4.8 volt of potential but for the other electrolytes which are given here you can see even after 4.8 volt the system is little bit stable so we just wanted to show the relative stability of different electrolyte which can be used in a typical uh, lithium ion or other ion batteries now coming to another example that studying lsv for electro deposition system so here um, one example is given so the red ones are the quantum dots and on to the quantum dots on the surface uh, we are uh, depositing silver by an electro deposition technique and as those silver uh, is getting deposited we keep on getting different peaks and with respect to time you can see the peak is increasing this is an indication of deposition so by this lsv we can actually visualize the deposition kinetics onto the surface so finally uh, we give two more examples where LSV are used for sensing applications like in this case the left one is for the ammonia sensing uh, so this typical reaction is an irreversible reaction which is taken for sensing ammonia so the reaction is ammonia is giving uh, nitrogen for by some catalytic activity and with respect to concentration you are doing LSV and you can see uh, as the concentration increases the peak intensity also increases and the uh, and the peak current uh, can be used to plot a calibration and with this calibration we can determine the concentration of the unknown uh, ammonia solution similarly another example for bre breast cancer biomarker detection using high density silicon micro needle array electrode so uh, this electrode has been fabricated with a specific uh, attraction towards the biomarker and uh, when we do cyclic voltmetry, do the LSV, that is linear sweep voltmetry, we get certain potential at 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 what the interaction between the biomarker and the electrode takes place, and based on the concentration of the biomarker, we get different peaks. So those peaks is actually giving the indication whether uh, I mean the concentration of the biomarker in the solution, and from those. Uh, intensity information we can also develop a calibration as it is done in this plot C and this calibration can be used for identifying unknown uh, solutions or um, unknown biomarkers so those are the typical examples of uh, uh, LSV applications in this video briefly we have given few examples from different research papers where exactly CV is being used where, where exactly LSV is being used but there is no hard uh, there is no thumb rule 
that you should be using LSV or you should be using CV. The idea is where we get more relevant information. Like for this particular case in breast cancer biomarker identification, we are not doing CV because we only want to see the oxidation potential and with respect to different concentration how it is changing. So we don't need to go for what is happening whether the biomarker is going back to uh, giving I mean the reaction is re reversible or not we just want to show the oxidation because if we have this oxidation then only I can get more current and that more current is an indication of more concentration so my need is just to look at the peak intensity or uh, peak current and that is why we don't need to go for a CV like uh, I'll give another example like I want to know about the system whether it's an irreversible or reversible so in that case I should not go with an LSB because if I don't come back I will not I will not be able to understand whether it has a reductive peak or a redox a reduction peak or not that is why to understand reversibility quasi reversibility or irreversibility it is important to do a CV so once we go ahead with multiple characterization our thought process our experience build up and then it becomes easier to comprehend which characterization tool is more relevant for my experiment with this we uh, end here i hope uh, this video will help you thank you very much